Ah yes, 2013 is over, Red. It was over a long time ago. Shut up. Anyways, the 2013 era was a fun year for me, and over that year I played a lot of fun games. Games that were memorable and fun in every way. And for the, today's video I'm going to be tackling 12 awesome games. Why 12? Because there were so many fun games I honestly think I couldn't put them all in 10. Now let us begin, shall we? Now, if someone ever came and asked you that if there was any Godzilla video game, these three games are probably the first thing you think in your mind. These games being Destroy All Monsters Melee, Save the Earth, and the first one I ever played of the three, Godzilla Unleashed. Yes, I am a kaiju fan, but not the biggest one, but one that leaves no franchises like Gamera and Ultraman. And this game, on its own, is pretty fun. Not to mention the huge roster of monster pretty much makes the hugest cast of any Godzilla fighting game period. The story is also unique, revolving around a gathering of space crystals that are taking over all the monsters minds while making them stronger. Admittedly, the controls are on the lofty side, but still overall it's a fun game nonetheless and definitely recommended to any kaiju fan. At number 11, we have the hardest game I've ever played in 2013, Prinny 2, Dawn of Operation Panties, dude. I'm not really a fan of the Disgaea series, at least not the games, but I do like their action platformer spin-off series, in this case, the Prinny games. So what's the story of Prinny 2? Well, it's almost the same as the first Prinny game, but I'll give out the story in case there's viewers that don't know about the series in general. You are a Prinny, a damned soul in a bird's body, trying to live out your cruel and miserable life, until suddenly, Prinny bombs! So you were in your kind dash to the throne and to see that Master Inez is pissed again, this time because someone stole her panties. So it's now up to you to retrieve her stolen panties and you only got 10 hours left until she slaughters everyone and it's game over. These games revolve around action platforming, like I said, but don't be fooled that easily. These games are hard, really hard, and no your eyes aren't deceiving you, yes that's the total amount of life you start out with. With that said, you'll be dying a lot, despite all of this, I still love this game, even more than the original Prinny. There's just so many new things that you can do in this game, like the inclusion of playable characters like Asagi, and most of all, La Harl. So yeah, this game is really hard, though despite all this, I had a ton of fun. I'm not exactly a hardcore gamer, but if you are that kind of person, this game was not half bad for you. Dude. Now, the genre and concept of humans fighting against dinosaurs have been done many times before, but does this concept work in the craze of Primal Carnage? Yes, 
But the thing about Primal Carnage is that you get to pick a team. Either you want to be a human or a dinosaur. There are five classes for each team, each with its own specific stat strengths and weaknesses. I might just make a review of this game in the near future, but there's something I need to address before I wrap things up. This is the first Steam game I ever bought and played, so that means a little lot to me. I had a great time with this game overall, and with Primal Carnage Genesis on its way, what else can be said about dinosaurs? Another game with dinosaurs? What are you, Red? Some kid with a mentally scarred obsession? First of all, no, and at the same time, yes! I'm sorry, but I have a huge fascination with dinosaurs, dragons, lizards, and basically anything that's a reptile. I've searched the globe searching for games with my most inner desires, and after I'm done playing with one game, I felt like I didn't have enough. I JUST WANT MORE! Oh, and Fossil Fighters, I almost forgot. The story of Fossil Fighters is simple. You're an average, everyday silent protagonist that's going to Vivisaur Island to become a Faisal Fighter, in which you can bring dinosaurs back from the dead, but this time they're brought back as Vivisaurs and they're technically not dinosaurs anymore, since now they're beings of immense power. It's your average Pokemon knockoff, but it works. As for gameplay, well, you roam around a large world trying to dig out items with your pickaxe, which you track with your radar. Sometimes you'll find pointless rocks, other times you'll find loot, and most of the time you'll find fossils. Which you bring back to your lab and dig them up with your pan and BAM! Artificial reproduction. Occasionally, you'll encounter other fossil fighters like you in your journeys, and sometimes you're forced to fight them with your team of vivisaurs. And like I said before, each vivisaur has its own specific stats, typing, and weaknesses. It's a fun game overall, though the characters are very bland and forgettable, it's still fun nonetheless. And hey, if you're a person who's into Pokemon knockoffs, why not give this one a try? This entry is a tie between two games of the same spin-off series. Number 8, we have both Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, Gates to Infinity, and Blue Rescue Team. Now, if there's anything I want to say of either of these games, it's that I love them. I really do. But before I start gushing over, let's talk about the story. Proof be told, both games have different stories and characters, but do have the same premise. You're a human turned into a Pokemon, and then sent into the world of Pokemon, where you come across your partner. You quickly become friends and go throughout the world, searching for treasures, fighting villains, making friends, and eventually undercovering the truth about your past. And as for gameplay, well, the concept of Mystery Dungeon is that it's a dungeon crawling RPG in which you roam around a randomized dungeon filled to the grim with enemies and items as you try to make it your way through each fall to eventually reach the end of the stage. Another reason on why I love the Mystery Dungeon game so much is because it's one of those games that heavily revolve around its story and characters. And I have to say, there's some truly tear-jerking moments in these games, and honestly, that's why I love these games so much. Its cast of characters were so well developed and likable that you actually truly get to sympathize with them. For all of this, neither game had that big of an impact compared to Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Sky, which I played last last year. Still, there are fun games nonetheless. <laughs> At number 7, we have yet another awesome Steam game. Awesome Knots. This is one fun game. And concept-wise, I think of it as a blender mix of League of Legends and Team Fortress 2. Only that you have one goal in mind. Pick your favorite character, destroy the opposing team's defense system, infiltrate their base, and destroy their core. Story is also simple and practically non-existent. 
two sides are battling over a mineral known as Sonar. And a group of intergalactic mercenaries known as the Ozonauts are the only thing that can help them now. So you have this huge number of colorful characters, each with its own distinct personality and funny quotes. As for the Ocelot I like the most, well, go ahead and tell me yours, but my favorite Ocelot is Leon. He's basically the spy of the Ocelot world. Only funner. He's not as cheap as the spy and nor does he have an insta-kill backstab, but he's just so fun to play. I could just imagine people's frustration as I sneak in and destroy their turrets and base. FEAR THE CHAMELEON! Graphics are also very colorful and gorgeous, but by in God said, the best thing about Ocelots besides the gameplay is the music. Just listen to it! So as a whole, Ocelots is an awesome Steam game that I highly recommend if you're into those kind of games. Wait, 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 Yoshi's Island? On the list? Why? Have you not had an SNES in all your life? Well, to tell you the truth, honestly, no, not really. Actually, the first console I ever laid eyes on was the Nintendo GameCube, and the first game I ever played was Super Mario Sunshine. I did play some NES and SNES games in the Virtual Console, but the amount of games that I could get were very limited, so naturally one day me and my younger brother bought ourselves a Retro Duo, a console that can play both NES and SNES games, and we started buying us some games that we can experiment on, and Yoshi's Island was one of them. So yeah, Yoshi's Island as a whole is a really great game, and I certainly had fun with it. Yoshi can still move around like Mario and jump, but the advantage that he has over Mario is his flutter jump, and the ability to swallow enemies and shoot them out as eggs, which is incredibly fun and satisfying to use. And just look at the sprites and the background designs, and the amount of detail put into it. It's amazing, and truly shows what the SNES is capable of. Enemies and bosses also come in various shapes and sizes, ranging from shy guys to piranha plants to... THESE THINGS! <laughs> and above all else, this game can be quite challenging. Alright, Poochie, you be a good duggin- <gasps> POOCHIE! So, Yoshi's Island. It has great gameplay, colorful visuals, and the most disgusting commercial ever in a video game. What hasn't been said about this game? Yeah, that's right, Skylander Swap Force is on the list. Now, when talking about a game like Skylanders, you'd probably end up with a series of mixed opinions. On one hand, there are the people that absolutely hate this franchise, calling out that it's not at all a Spyro game and that it ruined the Spyro series along with calling it a mere cash grab. And on the other hand, there are the people that really love this franchise, mostly younger gamers because well, toys and games make a very good combination, right? As for me, well, I never grew up with the Spyro series. Like I said before, my gaming sessions started during the time of the GameCube era. And sure, there were some Spyro games on the GameCube along with some commercials, but I don't know, I, I was never interested. Nor was I a reptilian fanatic back in that time. But did I enjoy Skylander Swap Force? Yes, yes I did. The game as a whole in gameplay is still somewhat the same, only this time you have a jump feature, and it's pretty awkward, mostly during platforming sessions, but the graphics are given a huge update and it's amazing. Now let's talk about those Swap Force Skylanders, and personally, I love this new roster. The designs for these Skylanders are very cool, and there's lots of new designs compared to Giants where there was just two Skylanders and different versions of the same ones. And finally, let's talk about that new game, Skylanders Trap Team. Now, I do like the designs for a lot of these Skylanders, but with a gimmick like Trap Team, 
you start to realize that Toys for Bob and or Activision might just be starting to ran out of ideas. I mean, the next thing you know, they're gonna make Skylanders Custom Squad. Still, I like these games a lot, especially during multiplayer. Oh yeah, it had to be on the list somewhere, and on number 4 we have Super Mario 3D World. Being a sequel to Super Mario 3D Land, it did everything a sequel should do, and it works. And honestly, it's one of the funner games on the Wii U, and everything just had that classic Mario feel that we all love. Aside for updated graphics, the most interesting thing about this game is indeed in fact the cap power-up. With it, you can scratch, pounce, and climb up walls, making it a very fun and useful power-up. Bosses are also cool and creative. I love the level designs, the Captain Toad stages were fun, and my favorite character, believe it or not, is Toad. Yeah, he's no longer that bird flipping son of a gun that he once was, but mainly I just think he's adorable in a cat suit. I love it. Oh yeah, Super Mario 3D World was just as fun as any other game on the list. But what could possibly top it? Speaking of Pokemon knockoffs... Nope! Digimon Rumble Arena 2 is higher than Super Mario 3D World. I really don't know why, but for some odd reason I find this game to be funner than the last entry on the list. But what is Digimon Rumble Arena 2? Well, it's a spin-off game of the Digimon franchise, and it's basically a Smash Bros. knockoff, but damn is this game fun to play. It's all fine and simple, pick your favorite Digimon and have that Digimon duke it out on other Digimon. Fight, nab items, avoid dangerous obstacles, and even Digivolve after collecting enough blue orbs. You can Digivolve to your champion forms and then into the once unique Mega Evolution. But seriously, this game was a blast to play, and that's mostly because I have a younger brother to play multiplayer with me, with my favorite characters being Geomon and Beemon. But do you know how much money it took me to buy this game? Eighty dollars. EIGHTY FREAKING DOLLARS! But still, it was worth those eighty dollars, and after playing this game, I surely am rather excited for the upcoming Digimon All-Stars Rubble. Hey, you think I'd miss this? Ah uh, yes, Pokemon X and Y. How could I not miss this game? It's fun, fun, and most of all, fun. It's a typical mainstream Pokemon game at heart, but it's still a damn fun experience nonetheless. We all get the formula at this point. Young kid wakes up from his bed to become a Pokemon trainer. You catch the Pokemon, beat the gyms, take on an entire criminal organization, and be the very best like no one ever was. My first playthrough and experiences were great, and I made a pretty good team overall. Not to mention the new tweaks with the game were so enjoyable. I had fun with the super training minigame, and the online system was a heck of a lot easier. And I just love Pokemon and me, giving me and other players a new way to bond with their Pokemon a little further. You can pet them, feed them, and watch as their bond grow. The gameplay is still the same for the most part, but I just love the 3D graphics, which I hate to say I'd prefer to have more than a two cardboard cutouts fighting each other. For now, let us get to the biggest topic in my mind, Fawful's Minion's thoughts on Pokemon X and Y. For those of you who don't know this guy and have absolutely no idea what I'm saying throughout this whole show, I'm gonna supply you with a link to the video that I'm talking down below. Now let us begin. Now, I completely agree with his thoughts and opinion, for the most part, but there are still a lot of things that I am up against. Number one, it's barely innovative and isn't really that new. Okay, that's not entirely true, at least for me. It's still a new Pokemon game with new graphics, worlds, characters, and most of all, Pokemon. It is the first mainstream Pokemon game to have fully 3D graphics, and yes, please note I said mainstream, for I am well aware that there are many other Pokemon games that have used this feature. 
Number two, the roster is too small. Yeah, the roster may be small, but who cares? I love this roster nonetheless. A lot of these Pokemon designs are downright creative. I mean, you cannot go wrong with an aquatic frog ninja, a flying bat wyvern, and even a godly frilled lizard. Of course, since the roster is too small, the choices to pick are very limited, but personally, I don't care, and I'll soon tell you why at the end of this video. Number 3, it's way too overly detailed. <laughs> okay, that one right there I personally find to be rather ridiculous. I mean, look at Kyrum and his two forms, and yet you put him higher than Zekrom and all the above on your top 100 Pokemon list. Tufts, claws, pointy things in this generator butt. Little overly polished jewelry attached on well-made golden walls can't be too much to make your eyes bleed. Number 4, the slight stat changes on older Pokemon. Firstly, I don't care, don't give a crap, and I'll explain why later. People, just take your patience, I'm following all of this up to the very end for special reasons. Number 5, Team Flare is incompetent. Alright, I agree with you on that. Team Rockets themselves may have been incompetent, but they were at least kind of funny. These guys are nothing special, with the exception of their leaders, but their goals are pretty interesting. I mean, using a giant doomsday machine built by someone else to kill everything in the world and then take over the entire planet is pretty interesting, but that's all there is to these guys. With all that said and done, let's get to the biggest topic in general. The Mega Evolutions. Like I said before, I completely respect your opinion. But sometimes, I think you should just calm down and get used to them because, well, they've been done! And Game Freak isn't just gonna simply get rid of them. Now, one guy in the comment section said that you hated the Mega Evolutions, but I really don't believe that. I think you just have a hard time getting accustomed to that. I mean, come on guys, get together! Come on! Get together! I got milk and cookies at my place! But now is not the time to hammer some jokes on a wall. Now is the time to get rather serious. You know when I said that you should honestly get used to these guys? Well, I really think you should get used to them. Or better yet, use them in battle! Because there's no excuse! Everyone's using them, so why aren't you? Yes, they're pandering to fan service, but why get so pissed at Gen 1? Don't you like Mewtwo, Caesar, Char- uh, No, not Charizard. But come on! And now, with the upcoming Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, there's going to be a lot of Gen 3 Mega Evolutions, so really, don't get too pissed. Unless if you don't like Gen 3. And while you were complaining that Gen 6 isn't really that new and people think it's new because of its graphics and Pokedex, don't forget something. The Super Training, Pokemon Ami, the new Fairy Type, and even the freaking Mega Evolutions are all signs of cool, new, and innovative ideas. And yet, you never consider these things to be new at all. I mean, what the hell? You can't just complain that there are things people are forgetting that makes the franchise great when you yourself aren't known of the things that make this game great. But what makes this even worse is that you stated once that it's the little things that keep you going, but here you are shrugging them off like they're not even there at all. And let's not forget those Mega Evolutions. To me, I see that you don't appreciate these guys because their stats are very powerful, and yeah, you're half right about that, but they don't get too overly frustrated or feel that you're too cheap, because the only reason why you think they're cheap is because you're letting them be cheap. And when you get down to that, they're not completely indestructible. There are still many ways that you can defeat these guys that doesn't result abusing something. Trust me and your fans when I say this, and don't spout out bullcrap like, well, the bad ways nonetheless. You can't just limit yourself to the things you most like and complain about the different things because you're not used to them like a Gen 1-er. Learn, get accustomed to these mega forms. 
and these features. And that's what I personally think on your thoughts on Pokemon X and Y. If you don't agree with me, that's fine. Just know that this is just my opinion. Respect mine, and I respect yours. But just to make things clear, when I was playing this game, I didn't care about the slight stat changes, or even the small roster. All I cared for was to have fun, and that's what I think you should have too. But perhaps you were expecting too much of what you wanted and like, and to that, I completely understand. But regardless of what people think about it, whether if it's an upturn or a lofty side, to me, it's a new way of experiencing Pokemon, whether you all like it or not, and to me, it gave everything the fans have always wanted, while giving the newcomers a nice treat to hang on to. Alright, we're almost done, but first, let's get to some good old honorable mentions. Honorable mentions number one, Fez. Fez was another Steam game that I got in 2013, and don't get me wrong for those of you who enjoyed it, I liked it too in the very beginning, but suddenly I just stopped dead in my tracks. I was just distracted on other games after that, but I will give you this, the graphics are amazing and truly beautiful. Honorable Mentions number 2, Joe and Mac 2. This game was one of the SNES games that I bought and played in 2013, and I had fun for a little while, but suddenly I just stopped, like Fez. And honestly, I don't know what to say next, so I'm just gonna move on. Honorable Mentions number 3, Skullgirls. Now we're getting to the good stuff, and it's yet another Steam game. I love this game's graphics and soundtrack, and the gameplay is pretty damn solid, but the only reason I stopped is because well, this may not be true, but there's not much to this game. Oh yeah, there's multiplayer, but I instantly quit on that after I got my ass kicked. Twice. Honorable Mentions number 4, Dragon's Prophet. Dragon's Prophet is an MMORPG that you can get for free on Steam, and the first time playing this game was pretty great, but all that ended when I reached a dungeon the Tangarora Abandoned Quarry in particular. I kept on dying, but maybe that's just because I was in a lower level. I also have been encountering a lot of slowdown the more times I've played this game. Oh, not to mention that update in which all of my skills completely disappeared. Cause I really needed that, did I? Bottom line, I'm really not a fan of MMORPGs. They just have something that I displeasure. Or can just rob you of your money every six months just to keep your going. And honestly, I want to like this game along with this kind of genre, but uh, I just can't. Finally, honorable mentions number five, Primal Rage. Now this is a game that could have made it on the list. It's a fighting game in which you can draw five primal creatures of rage. Fun is the definition of this game, but since the amount of games to pick in 2013 were so big, I left this game out and into the walls of obscurity. But I love this game nonetheless, and it could have reached at least the lowest ranking on the list, but it couldn't make it. Oh well, you still did great overall, Primal Raid. And now, let's recap. Number 12, Godzilla Unleashed. Number 11, Prinny. Number 10, Primal Carnage. Number 9, Fossil Fighter. Number 8, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Number 7, Awesome Nuts. Number 6, Yoshi's Island. Number 5, Skylander Swap Force. Number 4, Super Mario 3D World. Number 3, Pokemon Rumble Arena 2. And number 2, Pokemon X and Y. This game is the big one, the game that left such an impact on me. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you... Demon's Crest. Without a doubt, the best game I've ever played in 2013. You may be surprised that I'm putting a SNES game higher than Pokemon X and Y, but honestly, say what you want, this game left such an impression on me. This game is basically a spin-off of the Ghost and Goblin series, centering around the red gargoyle known as Firebrand. You know, that annoying red devil that will always swoop down to rob you of your armor, You'd be surprised to hear that he had his own spin-off series once. 
I knew I was going to enjoy this game from beginning to end. It had great gameplay, great graphics, and even a great story. The game takes place in a world that's split into two rounds, one inhabited by humans and the other inhabited by demons. One day, six magical stones fell from the sky and into the demon realm. They are known as crests, and they are magical artifacts that can grant great unimaginable powers to anyone who wields them. This will result in a civil war in which thousands upon thousands of demons fought each other to the death in order to obtain the crest's power. And out of all of these battles, only one demon truly laid victorious, and it was the Red Gargoyle Firebrand having obtained five of the crests. Its conquest for power and bloodlust would then inevitably lead to a brutal fight with the Demon Dragon, Keeper of the Final Crest. He wins, but at the cost of some brutal severe injury. Exhausted and weakened from battle, he flies off into the sky, only to get attacked by his archenemy Phalanx. With all the crest of his possession, Phalanx becomes the supreme ruler of the demon realm, and it's now up to Firebrand to regain the crests once more and get his revenge on Phalanx. After that, the game just pulls off no disappointment. It starts off with you fighting the previously defeated demon dragon, then you burst out of the arena fighting Ku Klux Klan members and eventually obtaining your first crest. The game entirely revolves around these crests, and each crest has its own strengths and abilities. The Earth Gargoyle is a powerhouse, capable of breaking certain environments that you cannot normally do. The Wind Gargoyle can fly, but cannot latch onto walls or even attack certain bosses due to its maneuverability. The Water Gargoyle can swim, but also cannot latch onto walls and fly. And finally, the Time and Heaven Gargoyles are the most powerful in the game. Basically, all these forms kick ass in their own right, so better use them at their most effective. What also makes this game so amazing is the secrets that you can find. You won't be able to spot them on your first try, but after getting more crests and upgrades, you'll be able to find more items and secrets. Each level has its own secrets, whether a new item or an alternate path. Graphics are also incredibly awesome. There's just so much detail put into it. Look at all these background images, it was great for its time and even today, and just show what the SNES is capable of. And like Awesome Knots, the best part about this game besides the gameplay is the music. It's well orchestrated and it has a great use of the pipe organ. Just listen to the soundtrack, ah it's just so awesome! Admittedly not everything's perfect. There are a couple of slowdowns here and there, and some of the bosses are a bit unbalanced. But if that's all there is wrong to this game, I am happy to take it as number one. And even then, there still are some great bosses, especially the final boss. What else could I possibly say? It exceeded all my expectations, the start and introduction was fantastic, the gameplay and difficulty was solid, and the music and graphics were just gorgeous. And that is why I put Demon's Crests on the number one spot. Alrighty then, that's all folks. But let me address a few things before I end this video once and for all. First of all, you need to understand this. The era of 2013 was a great time for me. It was the first time I got Steam, the first time I got an SNES, and I just got so many games throughout that era. Now, I may have uploaded this video a little too late, but still, I am proud for what I have accomplished. Say what you want. But it's still not over yet. There are still so many games to play this year and so many newer games to come out, and who knows, maybe this year will be greater than the last. I'm the new guy in red, and I'm gonna be doing both flip notes and countdowns. See you guys later.